Hi, welcome to the DE Nichols channel. Today I'm going to show a common problem that makes people look after uh, all kinds of issues. Is it an acceleration issue? Is it a clutch issue? Is it a transmission issue? And it all comes down to one simple thing. At least when you're lucky. Mazda 626. It's about a 2001. The customer's complaining of it jerking on the freeway randomly. The first thing I thought of is motor mounts, but we put it into gear, hit the gas a little bit, standing to the side, front and back, and the engine only moved about this much, and it felt really strong, as in when I gave it just a little bit of clutch, and it moved, when he gave it a little clutch, it moved a little bit, and when I gave it a lot of clutch, it moved that much, but still, everything was very firmly attached. So all in all, I thought it was jerking due to uh, motor mounts, which is a common thing on a manual car. Uh, for frame of reference, we are working on a four cylinder, 16 valve engine. I have no idea the liters, but that's immaterial. Right now, I'm going to give you some advice that has come true on every kind of car at some point a Subaru came in one time came in for codes for a bad transmission and one of the things that I found on the advice on all data is that it can be a loose cable now this was even looser than when I first started now long term it's New Year's Eve so we can't replace it yet but long term we're going to get this cable replaced as you can see it's quite corroded but in the meantime, since the, it's New Year's Eve and part stores are closed or closing before we can get there, uh, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up. Now, a lot of times people will over tighten these and once they over tighten them, this band stretches and it becomes too long to stay tight later. So I always try to get it just tight enough that a little more tight than it's not moving to leave as much band left. Usually on an older car like this, people have over tightened at some point and it stretched it. It's gonna stretch over any main time, but abuse makes it worse. Now there's another effect going here, going on here at the same time. Uh, and this is quite a poor court connection, of course. But the other thing we have going on is that this is actually conical, okay? And this is actually quite clean. I don't have a cleaner on me. I don't have all my tools over here in Germany. This is quite clean, but if you push it down, because this is actually shaped a bit like a cone, it gets wider at the bottom, the more you shove it down, or you redneck it without your hammer, the more you shove it down, it'll tighten up, okay? And be very careful, don't arc between the positive and the negative with your tool. And that's already got it not moving. And seeing that I still have a gap, that means I'm not gonna to have to do my extra technique. Now what my extra technique is, is if it's too far gone and you can't get it tightened up by knocking it down lower onto the cone because this battery post gets wider at its base, then the next fix that you do is you actually take this off, pick it up, turn it on its side and pretend the hammer is hitting my thumb boom, 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 and you're actually ovaling it so that it can create a good connection left and right. This time we got lucky, we were able to just tighten it up and hopefully the symptoms improve. But I think it's still gonna be hard to start because all of the power of this car is going through that severely corroded copper. Now, you, say, you might say to yourself, well, those strands are pretty thick. There's miles of copper underneath electricity can travel on. While that is true, what electricity wants to do is it wants to travel on the outside of the copper. It doesn't go through the center. It actually skeeters across the surface while the surface is corroded. So even if the wire is not corroded all the way through, it's going to hamper uh, its effectiveness. Now, if I had a voltmeter on me, I could do a drop test to see how much resistance is in this wire by going from here 
down to the body. This uh, cable terminates down here. I'll get some more light on the subject. So now that we have light on the subject, you can see where this battery cable comes out here. It actually, it actually goes through this mesh, which we may or may not open up depending on time. I could just throw a new, new cable next to the old one. But if we want it nice and clean, we're going to open this up, put the cable through, and we're going to undo this bolt right there, that bolt that's real dark right there, clean up the surface, scrape it down with a wire brush, put the new wire on, trace it along back up here, and chances are they're not going to be selling an aftermarket Mazda 626 2001 cable. Okay, that just doesn't happen. So what you do is you actually measure the length of the cable and maybe just a little bit longer. You buy that about that length or slightly longer. And then you buy the cable that has an end on it. So they build them where it's simple like this. And they also build another type where it has a cable coming off of it so that you can get that bolted down here. So the new cable is just going to swing right past and it's going to come back and bolt on here for an extra cable coming out using a, uh, a little guy that can screw in there, you know, maybe some prongs. Other common see things that I see happen with these cars, other common things I see happen with these cars and any other car, when you have spark plug wires that come close in contact with each other and possibly touch each other, First off, it's best, if possible, to use these little clips to hold them off from touching because the more they touch, the more they'll burn together and more you'll get issues. Like if you see this here, I, I missed this earlier, but if you see this carbon tracking right here, these wires are actually melting together. And since we're likely to drive this car to go get the parts, I might put some electrical tape around it just to help us get there. I mean, it's been driving pretty good, but um, uh, last week he had a very hard time showing me the, the surge. It wouldn't really do it. And this week it does it very, very well. And uh, I think it's partly because these wires are melting together more and more. Yeah, I got those off from touching. But can you see how clean this wire is? and how on this wire here, there's a different color to it. That's because they've been melting together and they're arcing out. So this car didn't have any misfires, but early stages of this, it's not gonna have misfires. It's just gonna per affect performance. Now that's different. That's not carbon scoring, that's paint, because as you can see, they've worked really hard to pretty things up and cover up little bits of rust here and there. Um, so that was painted together. Uh, yeah, so he's going to need, need spark plug wires as well. I always take notes. And the other thing I noticed is that his brake fluid is dark green. Always take a look at everything. The air filter also needs to be changed. There was a cloud of dust that came up from that. The oil looks clean. Looks like he has enough oil. Power steering fluids smells slightly burnt, but I mean slightly. He's only going to have this car for several months. We're just contractors out here for several months. So that, that can continue on the way it is. I wanted to check the coolant quality, but I couldn't earlier because it was hot. But we each went to our own places to, to live, got some lunch. I try to go register that uh, Hyundai over there pretty exciting but the office is closed on me so all right so we have a little bit of scale on there so maybe it can be a little bit cleaner no the fluid itself looks very clean so that scale is from a prior time before it was flushed I'm finding out here in Germany a lot more cars general maintenance is done. Uh, more frequently brake fluid flushes are completed on German cars.
or cars in Germany. A lot more cars have their timing belts already changed. And this is the overflow for the coolant. This can be a little more telling sometimes. I mean, it looks darker, but that's just because I think they went with the BMW blue coolant instead of the green coolant. Uh, I can't remember what's special about that. Maybe I'll pop that up on the screen. But that's just a different coolant it's quality. It works. But no, they don't make green brake fluid. So that needs to be changed. All right, I'm going to make some notes. I forgot to show you. Just a general undercar inspection. And the other thing I'm always checking, of course, is belts for any cracks. But you have to be look very closely, not just cracks. See, at some point, someone removed this and put an arrow on it, make sure they put it back on the same way. So whoever was the mechanic for this car knew what he was doing because the belts have to be put back and go on the same direction. Ah, one more thing. I'm glad I'm using the camera because it will help me remember past the new year. Um, painted wires. Underneath, is this grounding wire also crusty? Uh, probably need to uh, take that off, clean the paint off, make sure it has a good connection because that could affect the performance of the car as well. All the grounding wire is important for good running. Okay, those are the basics. Anything more, we'd have it up in the air and shake down the tires and look for any loose suspension components, but that would be a different video. So, fingertip to just above my wrist, plus fingertip to elbow, plus fingertip to an inch above the sleeve. If the wire is this big or bigger, we've got it. Okay, I hope this help fix was helpful to you. Up on the top right is gonna be my most related video, which may be a video that's still coming. And on the bottom right is gonna be the video that YouTube thinks you're gonna like best on my channel. Get out there and work on something.